Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Dewart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi there, welcome to our coffee break. Today we have a wonderful friend visiting us, Sabine St. Pierre, who is a personal chef and founder owner of Sabine's Cuisine. Yes. And given that it, we're all in the Thanksgiving mode, <laughs> less, oh than <laughs> less than a week, <laughs> less, less than, than a week to go. Oh we said we got to have you on, girl. Yep. Talking about food, so, exactly. That's awesome. What I love to do. Well, you so know. thank you. Thanks yeah. for being here. And I've had the privilege of eating some of your food, and it is amazing. Oh, thank it's you. It's really amazing, <laughs> and it, and honestly, it's all. I don't want to use the word organic, but it's so many like Wholesome. kind of like farm to table Fresh. ingredients. Exactly. I think I pride myself on the farm to table style, wholesome, oh. unprocessed ingredients. I specialize in the allergen free, okay. special dietary needs. So a lot of my clients, um, you know, are looking for me to help them in those areas. So well, we're going to talk about that. But I'm going to unpack and rewind. I mean, I've met you before, <laughs> but you know, just learning a bit more about. So you, you. Um, Obviously, live in Hopkinton, which is yeah. so awesome. Live next to Dark near near yeah. Darlene, near Darlene, and, and Connie. Yeah, and Connie. Yeah, now for me. Oh, I know. Now it's used to be fun. my yeah. neighbor, but now she's Darlene. Yeah. 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 I just yeah. Yeah. everyone ends up with the lake. Yeah. 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 Everyone ends up down yeah. Yeah. Everyone ends up with the lake at some yeah. point. <laughs> so awesome. So how long have you lived in town? And so we've been in town eleven years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's been a long time. But you. Grew up, up. Next door. I did. I did. Okay. Well, I sort I of grew feel up like here in town. I too. feel like I grew up here in town. So tell us a little bit about that history. Like yeah. my dad had a pizza restaurant, Pizza Villa, here in town wow. for twenty five years. Wow. The pizza the grinder. Pizza, the pizza grinder is the best. That's the like pizza. legendary. The best. And where, <laughs> legendary. Where was it? It's where Yogurt Beach is now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. So that was gone. I moved here twenty years ago. Yeah, me too. So yeah. it was Hold a on. copy place after yes, that. Yes, that's when. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. It was gone before we moved here. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was on um, 95, 96 when it closed down. And I moved We moved in 97. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Okay, we missed February it. Yeah. So your, your family owned that. So my dad owned that, mm -hmm. and all of my sisters, we all sort of worked there. And I think that's sort of where I started with my passion for cooking and okay. love of food. Yeah. And, you know, I was sort of a townie because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was working on Saturday nights, so yeah. I got to know a lot of people. and. I think a lot of people thought we actually grew up here. <laughs> sure, because your, your business was in town. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I'm sure so. all the kids went there, too, for pizza. Oh, yeah, and they'd yes, sit across everybody. the street on the rock wall and oh. eat their pizza grinders. Oh. Yeah, it was it was fun. That's what. What's and a the pizza marathon grinder? was always oh. a big to-do. That would be. A pizza grinder is yeah. just a sub roll opened okay. up with sauce on both sides yes. and cheese. Oh. And then whatever toppings, whatever you like. So okay. you put, bake it in the then oven, and, in then the oven. Yeah. and then flip it up. To and then serve it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. But they were so popular and they were like two dollars. Yeah. Oh, that's like, you know, you're like yeah. you're a college student, it's like I'm getting pizza grinders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God. Cheap food. Exactly. <laughs> Cheap good food. Yeah. Better so than ramen. Learned, How did your dad yeah. he, he, um, become get into a restaurant business? He was always in the restaurant business. Yeah. I mean he started off I think in a friendlies and then um, I think the person who owned Shrewsbury Pizza mm. got him into the pizza business and then he decided he would open his own. Wow. So the entrepreneurial spirit is in my blood. <laughs> so how long have you been a personal chef? So I started Sabine's Cuisine 10 years ago. Wow. This is this November is my 10 year anniversary. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Cheers. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's a big, great. you know, milestone. Yeah, huge milestone. Absolutely. I was a fourth grade teacher for a number of years. Okay. And always had a passion for cooking. It was kind of my therapy to go home and just throw stuff in a pot and make mm. it taste good. Yeah. Because that's yeah. really the goal of cooking. That's right. And I just decided one day, my aunt was like, you know, I said, I just, I need to do something different. And she said, well, why don't you be a personal chef? And 10 years ago, there really weren't any personal chefs. Yeah, or not, if you were, unless you were the rich and famous or exactly. something. Exactly. You right? had a private <laughs> chef. Private <laughs> chef. Oh, that's different. You had a private right. chef. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I just kind of, I started with my grandparents. My grandfather was diabetic. Mm. So, special dietary need there. And and then I had neighbors um, over on Woody Island that mm -hmm. became clients and mm -hmm. someone I worked with in teaching. Ah. And it just kind of grew from there. Cool. And I mean, and in these 10 years, not only have you focused on having businesses thrive, you've had two kids. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't sleep. I was like, how do you get it done? I'm like, I don't sleep. <laughs> 
Well, speaking of kids, how many kids and what are their ages? So I have two. Okay. I have a three and a six-year-old. Oh, oh, wow. Two boys. Oh, named, wow. named after Even boats. Two boys, both named after boats. I've got Carver, who's my three-year-old, and okay. Grady, who's my six-year-old. Oh, great. Yes. Oh, and we live on the water with boats, and so it's perfect. Sounds so yeah. fun. We on the Cape a lot. <laughs> We do. Yeah, yeah. my in-laws have a house down in Mashpee, so oh, we, cool. we escape. And my all my boys, including my husband, are <laughs> obsessed with fishing. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect. Wow. So I've noticed in like your posts and stuff like that, with your family, you actually, the same kind of meals you cook for your clients, you cook at home. Yes. Right. It's not like you're like popping chicken nuggets and everything right. like that. <laughs> right. And you're like, you, you, know. Know, you know, look at Grady eating this, and he never eats anything but uh, <laughs> the other night. Oh, the tacos. the tacos. So I do have, and I do have a picky eater. Oh, okay. And I think it's, you know, I like to post things that are realistic. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do have a picky eater, and he won't even touch a chicken nugget. Oh, good um, <laughs> But he loves hot dogs. So oh. anything in the form of a hot dog. So mm -hmm. how, I mean, I had one picky eater, and now he's 27 and eats everything. Yep. But I know how I solved it, but how do you handle your picky eater? What so, do you do? Like I said, he likes everything in the form of a hot dog. I should mm -hmm. take stock out in Applegate Farm hot dogs. <laughs> and luckily, they have them in all different proteins. Oh. But um, he loves spicy foods. Mm. And so we were eating tacos one night, and he's not a trier either. He oh. won't willingly try stuff. My three-year-old will try anything mm -hmm. that's on my plate. Mm -hmm. Not his plate. <laughs> but <laughs> but on my plate, he'll eat it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, so he loves spicy. So he was talk hearing us talk about these tacos. We were eating these mini tacos um, our neighbor Tracy made and how spicy they were. And he's like, oh, I want to try one of those because of the spicy. He didn't care mm. what else the flavor was. Mm -hmm. So he tried one and he loved it. And okay. so now that's the key. So I'm like, I'm just going to put hot sauce in everything. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Solved my problem. <laughs> he's still not great about trying things, but Cub Scouts too, I think, helped. They have a try the tiger bites thing where they, right. it's peer pressure. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and I do children birthday parties and we do like we grate zucchini yeah. into things yeah. and put spinach in the yeah. meatballs and it's peer pressure. Kids try it and someone says, oh, this is delicious. Right. And then the other kid's like, oh. I will, I will tell you the peer pressure and then I always did the trick of like build your own taco or build yes, your own meal. Yes, they love to make stuff. But, but it was, I knew I'd have five or six ingredients and I knew two or three of them they didn't like. So whatever number it was. I had one more that I knew they liked that they had to pick between the lesser of yes. evils. And you just had to put that much on. Yep. You had to put that much on. Yep. And you know, I was you know, I don't <laughs> you know. Try why, everything. But you, you try wanted everything. them to enjoy and be well rounded. Yes. But, but let's talk about your oh. stuff. Yes. What is so it? Thanksgiving. Yes. So I have to give a big shout out to Rachel over at Marty's. Oh, yeah. she, she awesome. hooked me up with some awesome, very affordable wines for okay. Thanksgiving. Oh, look at and she's well stocked over there. So oh, yeah. definitely. Um, so this, she's sort of recommending these particular. She's recommending things. these. These all go great with turkey. Oh. So these are your main course wines. Okay. So this yeah. one that you have is cherry tart. It actually is like biting into a cherry pie. Ooh, it goes very cherry well. You can dessert, noir. but it yeah, goes very yeah. well <laughs> with uh, the turkey. Oh, good to uh, know. This is a rosé, okay. and as my fr friend Heather would say, she says rosé all day. Uh, so rosé has become it, hip again. It yeah. used to be the yes. soda pop wine. Way no, better. And yeah. people think it's only for summer. Right, that's it the thing I was thinking. It goes all day, wow. every day. So it what goes all day. All day. <laughs> <laughs> Say the name of it. Read it out. Jillian, Jillian Louise. 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 Oh. Yeah. Louise. And a then rose. this is a Riesling, and Which I think people sweet. tend to think Rieslings are sweet. This yes. is a medium body Riesling. Okay. Wow. So it, it's not as sweet as a typical Riesling. So it will pair very well if you think about, squashes. you've got the turkey and the cranberries yes. and the squashes, and um, this is a acorn squash with quinoa that I cooked in cider, oh, apple it's, cider. Not only is beautiful, <laughs> what's but the green? Oh, yes. The green is kale from my garden. It's yeah. still going strong, even though we've had a frost. Your yeah. garden is huge. Kale is hearty. My, uh, we do have a very big garden. My husband, I should say, has a very big garden. He, he, that's his, his baby. I just reap the benefits of it. <laughs> so you sauteed the kale and these other goodies? So I sauteed the kale with mm -hmm. some leeks, and then I threw some Ooh. cranberries and garlic in there and pecans. But the quinoa, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't love quinoa. It's a grain. It's very oh, high in protein love it. Yeah, and love fiber, it. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of flavor. I was going to say, it's boring by itself. So yeah. I cook it, for this application, I cook it in apple cider. Oh, so oh instead of water. You use so oh, I use wow. apple cider, and it gives it that sweetness. That is going, oh my goodness. Yeah. That's going Natural the sweetness. Yeah. It's awesome. And then, and then you just, you bake the squash. And then I roast the squash. Right. And then I assemble it. And that's a great, with Thanksgiving, you really want to do make ahead. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. You want to enjoy your guests. Yes. Get your stuff done ahead of time. Yeah. And then just pop it in the oven to heat it. Yeah. So do you roast the um, 
squash first and then put the goodies so inside? So I roast, yep, I roast it. I scoop out the seeds and roast it upside yep. down on parchment paper. Mm -hmm. I usually do about 400 for, I don't know, 15, 20. <laughs> I put everything at 400 degrees. Yeah, right. <laughs> My husband does that too. It's yeah. like, I just set it at 400. I know, I'm almost convection, everything is 400. Convection like 400. roast, 400. Okay. It just, yep, and you just got to know your timing. And yeah, then you just stuff it and it's ready to go. Yeah. Wow. And so that I've, could be a main course. That yeah. You have a vegetarian. Yeah. Right. I was, yeah. I've, it, when I've hosted in the past, family members are vegan. Yeah. And I've it's done beautiful. like eggplant dishes like that would that, work and it's so perfect. Pretty. Yeah, it is it's very so pretty. Beautiful. I yeah. love the color. Um, we're doing so that. what are some other favorites? Yeah. And, and, you know. so, and we won't give away all your trace secrets. You oh, can tell no, us about that's not okay. the That's okay. That's okay. And I mean, I, you know, it's, I, we, we kind of divvy out Thanksgiving to all this, uh, since I have so many sisters. It's you're just nice. one of the heart girls. I'm just one of the heart girls. <laughs> and you said you're one of five and they're all girls. All girls. Oh my God. That's and she's beautiful. an identical all twin. All girls. And I have a twin. Oh my God. So we all That's kind so of combine cool. efforts and do um, all the sides and stuff. Okay. And then yeah. my dad, um, he and I usually would spend our time in the kitchen doing the main course and getting everything heated up to yeah. put out for everybody. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it. Oh, and. Um, Backing up a little bit, you were mentioning Marty's, but you also use the kitchen. Oh, the chef's kitchen on Maine. Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, Which Chef Lee Yeah, mm -hmm. Great, you know, He's been on our show before, cool. too. Um, yeah. He's yeah. awesome. It's a beautiful technical. space yeah. over mm -hmm. there, and um, I've been using those primarily for my meal prep workshops. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you get everybody cool. together, and we prep a week's worth of healthy, clean, meals because everybody's meal prepping right and they're doing it in their kitchens by themselves and it's boring right. so i'm all about turning it into a party How fun! <laughs> cool. and about, his yes. space really works out beautifully mm -hmm. um for these workshops because you know i'll, I'll have upwards of 12 people yes. and we're making five meals and everyone takes home four to six servings of each meal wow so it's wow. a lot of a lot food. of food it's a lot of wow. food um so, so what do you see your clients struggle with i mean is it you know what i certainly remember was the juggling act of you know you've got kids in school and all their activities and you got to get a meal time got, you know, nobody has time yeah and there's people People that come to me, they're like, I love to cook, I just don't have the time to right. do it. Exactly. And other people that are, I don't like to cook, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. So a meal prep workshop is a great place to come because you, uh, the goal is to try to teach people how to meal prep efficiently. Mm -hmm. And people can make friends. Exactly. Yeah. It's a social Well, time. I was going to say, yeah. make friends, just, I, that would be fun to do. Exactly. <laughs> and you can, take, can, can have a little, a little wine. wine. Yeah. Yeah. So Marty's, get with a little wine. Rachel over at Marty's <laughs> can help you because it's BYOB over there. So you right. stop yeah. over at Rachel's right. first awesome. at Marty's and then come on over. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so it's a great way to meet people. It's a cooking lesson. Yes. You know, you learn some basic uh -huh. knife skills to help. Um, make meal prep more efficient. And I try to give people tips and tricks mm -hmm. of things, you know, that you don't have to always chop this or cut that. You can, there, there's sneaky tricks and cheats that you what's can your, use. What's Ooh. one of your favorite cheats? Um, I, have a, I have a couple. So, okay. I, you know what, I'll just give a one. Yeah, okay. okay. So all people right. can come to a meal prep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Don't give it all away. Um, <laughs> and you have one of those this Sunday. Yes, I have one coming up this Sunday, actually, at the Chef's Kitchen. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yes, I figured people needed to prep and have some stuff stocked up for after the holidays, mm -hmm. especially okay. people that travel want to come back. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my tricks is uh, frozen spinach. Okay. I have frozen spinach in a bag in my freezer all the time, and I throw that into everything. Mm. Meatloafs, meatballs, chilies. The chili cook-off. The chili cook-off. <laughs> Everyone knew it was my chili because yeah. it had all the vegetables yeah. in it. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that's awesome. When we talk about that, you are farm to table, healthy foods, that leads into that you actually do a cooking show. Yes. And what's it called? It's called The Cleaner Plate. Right. Yes. Tell, and I, when you first told me about that cleaner plate, I'm thinking clean plate club, like right. eat everything. Right. Is that, you know, but no. Well, and it was it's funny clean. when we first, so my twin sister and I hosted together. Uh, she's a personal cute. trainer. I'm the personal chef. So we really tie what in very well together. Yeah. And so when we first created the show, I called it a clean plate. Okay. But then I sort of felt like it had that connotation of cleaning off your plate. Right. And I, I think everything's about moderation. I am a healthy chef, but I'm also a foodie. Mm -hmm. I love good food. Yeah. So yeah. I will, I will <laughs> dive into anything. And, and enjoy it. Uh, that's why I work out. <laughs> You're one of the so I can eat and drink. drink. You do a lot of the CrossFit. I go to Resilience. Yeah. Oh, CrossFit in town. Drew's awesome. place. Yes, yeah. Drew's. Yep. And I actually run a rowing club over there, too. Wow. Yeah. His, his, he's growing big over there. It's and awesome. I know Hoppy and, um, Great facility. The Hoppy and Boating in Boston site is going to start a a rowing, rowing that next year. That came up. I saw yeah. that. I oh. will definitely. Um, and they're, they're actually going to invest in the 
the vessels and everything. That's awesome. Cool. That'll be great. So wow. the show. So the show, I decided to call a cleaner, cleaner plate, plate because okay. it is all about moderation. And it's we basically take recipes and we clean them up okay. to make them either healthier or allergen free. I do, okay. Like I said, a lot of my clients have allergies, celiac dairy allergy soy wow. so we try to give people options for still having delicious food but being able to eat it because it doesn't have what so they're what, can you give us a yeah. share an example that um <clears throat> so one of the popular things now is if people have a soy allergy okay to swap out soy and use coconut aminos ah. and even if you don't have a soy allergy coconut aminos just add a new flavor profile for Asian what, dishes. What are coconut aminos? So it's it's particular. just it's nectar from the coconut oh, okay. that they've boiled down okay. and it's a little sweeter. So it's not salty, like soy sauce is extremely salty. Okay. Uh, it doesn't taste like coconut mm -hmm. at all. Some people think it has that flavor to it. And if you like coconut it's you know it's not yeah. a big deal. But it really it doesn't have that type of flavor to it. But it's just a little bit and sweeter. It's just you buy at the is it, store? Is it yeah. yeah. Um, Price Chopper has it. And what do you, what is it, what's the ingredient in lieu of, or is it a salty so thing, a sweet So you thing, take it out and replace it for soy, typically. Oh, okay. okay. But you can also soy just use it as a regular soy? marinade, soy okay. sauce. Okay. Oh, so it's a marinade. Okay. Yep. Great. So it's a liquid. Okay. You can put ginger. You don't even need honey in it because it's already sweet enough. You do have to add a little salt. Like typically if you cook an Asian dish, you wouldn't add salt if you put soy right, sauce right, in right, it. Right, 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 yeah. But because the coconut aminos don't have that saltiness, you need to add some little salt. I connect you to my friend who does these non-GMO organic omega-3 dressings and marinades. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, you know, yes. need to meet my friend Carter. But yeah. so, so um, I, I'm really enthusiastic because I love to cook, but I'm, you know, a um, just do it. Cook it up yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and, and of course Thanksgiving's coming. Um, yes. What's your favorite dish to make? Even though you divvy things up, what's your favorite Thanksgiving mm. dish? So one of my, and it's it's not the healthiest dish, oh. and I, but this is where the a it's cleaner plate comes in. Okay, it's right. Thanksgiving. It's right, a party. Right, right. Yes. And uh, this is where you can go all out. And you can have some healthier options, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, a lima bean casserole. I grew Ooh. up eating lima beans, and everyone's like, oh, I don't I like lima, lima beans. beans. I yeah. like lima beans. But oh, I, yeah, I, I love like them. them. And it's in a, a cream sauce with shiitake mushrooms and leeks. What? My Aunt Madeline introduced it to our family years ago, and, and it's a staple. Really? You have to have it. And then you put a Parmesan and bread. I want to come up with a cleaner plate version of that green bean casserole. Done. Because <laughs> oh, I still buy those French and onions, <laughs> cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> oh yeah, I will come up. I will. I love, a challenge. love a challenge. You mentioned staple, and you know, That's I know funny. when I do family Thanksgivings, we rotate from house to house. Yeah. And whoever is hosting it has to do X, but everybody brings their staple yes. to it. But I'm curious, like, what's your what's your must have on Thanksgiving? I guess turkey. I mean, uh, oh. There's nothing us. I mean, we no, do. No, but a we side do, dish. Yeah. Everybody a side dish. We turkey. do the we do the, 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 we do the green bean right. casserole, and but we also have a lasagna. So what's so your ours? I mean, there's actually three that have to be there every year, no matter what. But somehow this is going on there too. <laughs> In my family, and it must be you know Southern tradition or something, mac and cheese, like some serious oh, okay. mac and cheese. Yeah. Um, oyster dressing of all things. I love oyster, oyster dressing. Oyster dressing. Wow. And, and collard greens. Oh you know? yeah. So those, those have yeah. to be there. And Anything my, else can be added. My friend Holly always has to have an oysters Rockefeller on like Thanksgiving, and I was like, I, I never even like heard of it. And she goes, and she's like, it's old New England and stuff like that. Scalloped yeah. oysters yeah. in Williamsburg, <laughs> right. and, and we used to have that all the time, but. I'm I'm all about the dessert. So oh, yes. oh yeah, it tart is. queen. <laughs> do you make all the pies? Do you, are so you, she's a tart wedge. <laughs> oh okay, <laughs> Darlene's word for So <laughs> I used to make all the pies and the cakes and everything, but I sort of um, converted, and I now do this pecan tart, um, Ooh, which is essentially a uh, sharp egg crust with unsweetened. Um, dark chocolate, Ooh. you know, just unsweetened chocolate in the crust and flakes, um, a chocolate ganache. Then nice. I do the pecan pie on the stove top. Yep. Mm. So soft boss stage. Wow. And then I do double amount of pecan so it mounds over it. Then you melt dark chocolate and drizzle that over top. Wow. So it's like reading a candy bar. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I just. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of effort. And I just, oh no, it's so easy. <laughs> So do you I do, don't bake. I so outsource do do to Yummy Mummy right. Brownies. I was going to say, do you do desserts on your show? No. Then? Yummy Mummy Bakery is my go-to. Yeah, I outsource and the desserts. I'm not a dessert person. Baking is 
very or a pumpkin pie. Tart. Very oh, scientific. Yes, pumpkin, you've got it. It's very I scientific, it and, it, and for cooking for me, it's throw stuff in, and, right. you, and I feel like you can't really mess things up, right? Unless you burn it, right? Exactly. That's hard to come right. back from. Because <laughs> baking, I mean, I know you do a lot of experimental stuff, but I, for me, you know, exact. You, know, you oh. learn as a kid at home. <laughs> you've got to level, level off it. that flour, yeah, and then you got to wash all the baking utensils oh and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See now, mine are shortcuts. Like I use my Cuisinart for everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, yep. but, but again, um, but it's fun, and, and yeah. I, I just, I, I'm laughing going, I love playing in the kitchen. Yeah. I've had some uh, failures. As, that's we how are. you learn best. <laughs> so that's how you learn best. When, when um, you mentioned playing in the kitchen, when you play in the kitchen on the show, on your TV show, we didn't mention the fact that it's in Ashland. Yeah. So that some of the households in Hopkinton can't pick it up. Some can. Right. But it does go up on YouTube. I do. I have a Sabine's Cuisine YouTube page. Oh, and then, oh so you okay. Can see we'll all have to share that. And so I would yeah. love that if you could share those on Real Housewives more too. Periodically, yeah. Get yeah. those things out there. I would love and, to um, do that. And have that up there because I think people are very curious on how to do stuff a little bit more healthier, be yeah. more health conscious. Yeah. And this is the time of year that people pack on that 15. Right. Right. From the now New Year's through New Year's Day. Will be coming. We're eating, I mean, at least, yeah. you know. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. like the number one day to join a gym is the Monday after yeah. New Year's yeah. celebration. And, prob, and so right now, I typically host one meal prep workshop a month at Chef's Kitchen on Main. Okay. So probably in January and February, I'm probably going to do two a month. Right. <laughs> to help people out with their New Year's right. resolutions. So we learned that then your sister does the workout right Exactly. After, right? Then she can work them out after. It's perfect. Right. So when you guys do the show together, and you're the one doing the cooking, what is the banter like then? It's fun because, I mean, I think the twin dynamic, we sort of just know each other's thoughts and know where we're leading with things. So mm -hmm. it's great because she'll ask a lot of good questions. She cooks, but obviously doesn't cook as much as I do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what, I, it's what I do every day, all the time. Mm -hmm. So she asks a lot of great questions, and she thinks of questions that people might be thinking mm -hmm. that they would want to ask. So it's great because she'll throw things out there to me, and, and it prompts me to give better descriptions of things. And then we share family stories Aww. and, and have our own little banter. So it's so slightly a comedy Super, show. Did you watch Super Twins growing up? No. <laughs> <laughs> my, my friends that are twins, their, their parents got them all the Super Twin. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so fun. Were you super, super Twins Unite? Yeah. Were you and your sister super close? Oh, yeah. We've yeah. always yeah. been very very, very close. Where does she live? She's in Holliston. Okay, oh, so, right so yeah. yeah. That's yeah. so great. Does she very have kids cool. too? She does. She has a one-year-old and a three-year-old. So cool. Wow. Yeah, girl. So our three-year-olds yeah. are, the two buddies. boys are, are little buddies. So it's oh, cute. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Cute. Yeah. So, so what's next for you as you're doing this? What are your... So, I mean, I, like I said, I celebrated 10 years and I think that the show I've only been doing for the last year, I started it last November. So I, I think that'll continue to be more of a focus. Um, I, I didn't get to do it as much last year. It's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you actually have to cart stuff in and out. I have to bring everything for in. For doing our little couch thing, we just kind of show yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a beautiful... Sometimes we bring a thing a half and half. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, they have a beautiful kitchen over there, so at least that yeah. set up's there. But I bring in all the equipment that I need and all the food that I need. And, Luckily, I have the teaching background, so yes. it's basically a lesson plan. Right. So oh, I have to right. create a lesson plan for the show because I've mm -hmm. never done a cooking show before. So I'm just oh, kind of creating cool. it yeah. and trying to think of how the flow will be. And, and we don't really rehearse much because we just want it to be very right. natural right. and fun and, <laughs> and have things we, come out up as it is. In <laughs> right. one episode, I drop a thing of corn into the thing of chowder that I'm oh. making. <laughs> and we just kept going because that's yeah. happened. It happened. happened. That's real. That's right. That's real. That's so. perfect. So awesome. I'd like to see that, you know, try to do that maybe once a month okay. whereas I, we've, at this point I think we have six episodes that we've done over the last wow. year uh, so I'd like to see that continue and just the meal prep workshops have really become a passion mm -hmm. for me and tomorrow's small business Saturday so oh, I mean right. you guys right. can sign up for you, you can get these as gift certificates going into the new year for Sabine yes. that's a good Cuisine. idea yeah. you, can, oh, cool. yeah. you can actually give you know someone as a stocking stuffer a, a workshop right mm -hmm. because now that I host them there before workshops have been in home <laughs> yes. so people can host in their homes and right. get six to nine friends together for a girls night in or even right. a couples night in uh, so it's nice though that I have uh, the chef's kitchen to be able to do it because then people could give a gift certificate right the first spot there that's a that's a great well, idea. Well you have an upcoming event is it sold out? Oh so I've been teaming up with Rachel over at Marty's for mm -hmm. wine dinners okay. so we just did our first wine dinner we did a Spanish wine dinner mm. last uh, a couple weeks ago 
the end of October. Okay. This uh, is over at Chef, um, Chef no, Lee. No, so we hosted in a private uh, uh, home. Okay. So mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. Ah. And so we focused on Spanish wines. We have a December 5th wine dinner coming up okay. that will also be in a private residence. Nice. So the, hopefully we'll get that information out in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. But this is a California wine dinner. Okay. Oh, fun. Yes. So is, fun, it, fun, is, this, is the menu a secret, or is that just for the guests? Not to um, the menu will, isn't a secret. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the highlights will be, I think, a beef short rib ragu Ooh. over uh, over pasta that right. I'll be doing, mm -hmm. and a chicken fricassee, oh, a nice. Sabine's cuisine, healthified oh. chicken fricassee. Healthified. Because right. I want people to know that yes. healthy food can still be delicious. Oh, God, so, yeah. And you can still serve it at a wine dinner with some right. beautiful wines. Yeah. It highlights all of those. So, so I'm and, wondering, and I, I think oh. it's cool because you've got your kids wanting to eat that way. Yeah. I right. mean, I, I'm a doubting Grady's like in the school lunch line. <laughs> yeah, no, typically I'm making his lunches, but right. he, he's still my challenge. <laughs> Carver, like I said, he will take anything. He'll eat the meatballs. He'll, you know, he would try some of that. He might not like it, but he'd try it. So I think about the young adults. Like um, My kids are, you know, grown now, but you know, when they got out of college, especially my son, yep. you know, I mean, he could make a basic chili, but that was about it. And yeah. when he got his own place, he used to call all the time. Yes. And it was great, you know, for recipes. Mom, how did you make so-and-so? <laughs> or what, can I, what else can I do with this roasted chicken? I'm yep. tired of eating the same thing. And so, cooking is a life skill. It really is. And yes. so, you know, coming from the teaching side of things, I really enjoy doing the children's birthday parties. Not only because it's a birthday party, it's fun, but it's a life skill that I'm hoping right. to pass on. And we do things like whole wheat pizza dough. Yeah. And they, we make lasagna roll-ups where they put, I, I have them put spinach into the ricotta. Right. So they're learning how to cook, make things a little healthier, and hopefully by the time they get into high right. school and college, they have a the skill, skill set. But I'm thinking college kids, those especially that live in apartments, yes. and then the new grads from college who are on their own yep. could benefit from, from cooking classes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they didn't live at home. So, oh, quick wrap up on uh, <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah, we are like, like <laughs> over, over <laughs> well excited over. about Thanksgiving. But there's happy a Thanksgiving. fun, happy there, Thanksgiving. Yes, a lot absolutely. of our sports teams are competing. Yep, um, what else is going know? on? So, so tomorrow night, Hoppington's playing in Weymouth against Melrose. If they win, December 2nd, Super Bowl at Gillette. So it's wow. all dependent on this Saturday night. Buses and kids are leaving from the high school Saturday afternoon. And um, they have to play at, They have to play at a neutral spot, so that's why they're playing in well Weymouth. Um, yeah. And then but, there's um, volleyball coming up. They have their, right? The, no, they're volleyball. in the playoffs. What's my yeah, game? Yeah, we're already <laughs> champions. Thanks, Mike. State championship. State champion. Well, oh, yeah. awesome. they're in the state championship set. What's your state? Nice. The golf is Tri Valley champions. The, the, the soccer. Yeah, but the volleyball are plays, so, so they haven't played. Good. Um, that, yeah. What right. a, we've got some real Thank athletes you in this so town. Nice. Nice. But yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Get out there and shop That's, tomorrow for yeah. Small Business Saturday. Got it. Enjoy right. Turkey Day. Awesome. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>